Happy New Year! Access your first free language gifts of the year right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the National Holidays Cheat Sheet. Want to know more about national holidays in the country you love? This conversation cheat sheet will not only give you the dates, but will also teach you all the words and phrases to talk about these holidays. Second, do you know seven tested ways to learn language fast? With this ebook, you'll learn how to speak better, remember more words, and improve fast. Download it for free right now. Third, do you have allergies and want to be able to read food packaging? Check out the most useful words and phrases you should know when reading food packaging, from nutritional value to allergens. Fourth, want to be able to talk about the world around you? Then this next one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn common geography vocab fast. Fifth, want to play video games in your target language? You'll learn the basic video game words and phrases with this one minute lesson. Sixth, want to learn the language on your phone? Then download our Innovative Language 101 app for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll learn fast and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12 month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now, before they expire. Hello, my name is Larissa, and today we are going to learn the top 25 most useful phrases in Romanian. Are you ready? Here we go. Buna. Hello. Buna. 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 Buna dimineața. Good morning. Bună dimineața. Bună dimineața. Mm, we usually say bună dimineața in a very formal way. So I would say bună dimineața to my parents when I wake up or when I get to school to my professors. It's quite formal. Um, but if I would say it to my cousins or brothers or sisters or friends, I can be friendly and say nața. Bună ziua. Good afternoon. The next one is good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bună ziua. Bună ziua. So if I see my professor, bună ziua. Bună ziua. First we did hello as in bună. So we use bună and then we add the time of the day. Bună ziua. Bună seara. Good evening. Good evening. We say bună seara. Good evening. Buona sera. We learn how to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Good morning, buona dimineața. Good afternoon, buona ziua. And good evening, buona sera. Cum va numiți? What's your name? When we meet someone um, and they don't introduce themselves, we might want to ask them their name. So, if they're about the same age uh, and you want to say it casual, you say Cum te cheamă? Cum te cheamă? Or Cum te numești? Cum te numești? For example, if I see a little girl and I, ask, I want to ask her her name, Cum te cheamă? Or Cum te numești? However, if I address an older person, I would say Cum vă numiți? Cum vă numiți? Or Cum vă cheamă? Cum vă cheamă? The polite way in Romanian to, to address someone is usually to put it in the plural form. Even if it's only one person, we address that person as if there are more people. It, it's funny because in English you have you for one person or for many people. But in Romanian, you can address to one person as if you're addressing more people. <laughs> and that is polite. Mă numesc Eva. My name is Eva. Let's say we ask the little girl, Cum te cheamă? What's your name? And she might reply something like, Sunt Eva. Sunt Eva. Or, Mă numesc Eva. Mă numesc Eva. Most of the times in Romania, we like to say I. So, in Romanian, I is eu. 
eu. That's why eu mă numesc Larisa. Eu mă numesc Larisa. Or numele meu, my name. Numele meu este Larisa. Încântat de cunoștință. And încântată de cunoștință. Nice to meet you. Uh, we have learned each other's names. And I feel nice to meet you. I feel that I'm happy to meet you. So I would say încântată de cunoștință. Încântată de cunoștință. I'm a girl and I would put a at the end of the word. Încântată. Încântată de cunoștință. If I were a guy, I would say încântat. So I would end it with a T. Încântat. Ce mai faci? How are you? Usually when we meet someone in Romania, um, we say, hi, how are you? Bună, ce faci? Hi, how are you? Bună, ce faci? Without bună, just ce mai faci? It's more like, how have you been? Ce mai faci? How have you been? How are things uh, going with you? How has it been going with you? Bună, ce mai faci? Or bună, ce faci? And the conversation would be very fast. Uh, exchanging salutes would be um, Bună, ce faci? Bine, tu? Bine, mulțumesc! Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Great, thanks! Sunt bine, mulțumesc. Și tu? I'm fine, thanks. And you? If a professor would ask you Hi, how are you? They would say Bună ziua, ce mai faci? And I would say, mulțumesc, bine, dumneavoastră. So, I'm good, thank you. How, and you? I use dumneavoastră because it's the polite way to say you in Romanian. If I say you for one person, I would say tu. If I say you for um, and address it formally, I would say dumneavoastră. It's a bit long, but it's a useful word. I just want to mention one thing about mulțumesc. Uh, just like in the you, for, for you is tu and dumneavoastră. So, short word tu and longer word dumneavoastră, informal, formal. Mulțumesc is the Romanian, 100% Romanian word uh, for thank you. But if we say thank you between friends, we might just say merci, which sounds like, like French. So, it might be easier to remember for some people who study other European languages. But uh, again, the most polite way to say is mulțumesc. Mulțumesc. And if you're between friends, merci. Merci. Vă rog. Please. So, one example for very useful when we use please. Like, could you please help me? Uh, could you please help me? So, I address someone that I don't know and I want to be polite. Like, could you please help me? Uh, mă puteți ajuta, vă rog? Mă puteți ajuta, vă rog? When, when we want to say after you, we can just say please, as in please go, go ahead, or after you, we would say vă rog, vă rog, after you, vă rog. <laughs> or if I order something at the restaurant, a salad, o salată, vă rog, a salad, please, as in I would like a salad, just the short version, a salad, please, o salată, vă rog. Vă rog. Cu plăcere. You're welcome. So when someone says mulțumesc and say you're welcome, cu plăcere. Cu plăcere. This is one of my favorite words because I like how pleasure sounds like in English as well and in Romania. Romanian, uh, plăcere. Romanians, um, so we believe that the Romanian language is a very sweet language. And plăcere is one of the sweetest words that I know. Da. Yes. Da. Da. Da sounds like Russian because it's the same. <laughs> da. 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 You have to be very confident. Da. Nu. No. For no, we say nu. No. No. I did my hand like this, but um, so for gestures, when we say da, we, we, we nod, and for nu, we do like this. So, do you like the Romanian language? 
Da. Is it difficult? No. <laughs> Something like that. Bine. Okay. Next one is okay. Okay. Bine. Bine. So, for example, um, I, I said earlier, hey, how are you? I'm fine. Bună, ce faci? Bine. I'm okay. Bine. Mă scuzați. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mă scuzați. Mă scuzați. It's a very polite way to say. Um, if you address a friend of yours, mă scuzi. Mă scuzi. If you address it formally, mă scuzați. Mă scuzați. So if I'm on the bus and by mistake I happen to step on someone's foot or something, ah, mă scuzați. Mă scuzați. Excuse me. Îmi pare rău. I'm sorry. So, excuse me is mă scuzați. And I'm sorry, îmi pare rău. Îmi pare rău. Three words. Îmi pare rău. Cât este ceasul? What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Cât este ceasul? Or cât e ceasul? So if someone asks me, cât este ceasul? Cât este ceasul? Or cât e ceasul? Este 11 și un sfert. Mulțumesc! It's 11.15. Thank you! Mulțumesc! You're welcome! Cu plăcere! Unde este toaleta? Where is the bathroom? I want to know where the bathroom is, so where's the bathroom? Unde este toaleta? Unde? Unde means where. Unde este toaleta? Unde este toaleta? Where is the bathroom? Așteptați un moment. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Așteptați un moment. Așteptați un moment. If I address it formally, așteptați. If I say to one person uh, in, informally, așteaptă un moment. Așteaptă. Așteaptă, așteptați. Singular, plural. Cât costă aceasta? How much is this? How much is this? Cât costă aceasta? Or cât costă acesta? The simple way to say how much, cât costă. If it's a female word, aceasta. If it's a masculine word, acesta. Female, aceasta. Masculine, acesta. Aceasta, acesta. How much? Cât costă? Cât costă? Aceasta? Da. <laughs> Pot să primesc nota de plată, vă rog? Could I get the check, please? The next one is a bit long. Could I get the check, please? Pot să primesc nota de plată, vă rog? Pot să primesc nota de plată, vă rog? The most important word is the check, nota de plată. If you want to say check, please, nota vă rog. <laughs> I would be, I would do something like nota vă rog, mulțumesc, something like that. Ajutor! Help! Help! Ajutor! Ajutor! Ne vedem mai târziu. See you later. Next one is see you later. See you later. Ne vedem mai târziu. Ne vedem mai târziu. See you later. La revedere. Goodbye. Goodbye. La revedere. La revedere. Can you do the R? Revedere. La revedere. La revedere. We also say pa between friends. Pa. Pa, pa. Or when we address children. Pa. Pa. But la revedere is very common. Nu știu. I don't know. I don't know. Nu știu. Do you know? I don't know. Nu știu. Uh, so we've reached the end of our first lesson. How did you like it? V-a plăcut? How did you like it? Um, I hope you liked it. La revedere!
Pa, pa! La revedere! O zi bună! When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step -step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Do you want to crush your language learning goals and overcome setbacks on the road to mastering a new language? In this video, you'll discover why learning goals are so vital to learning a new language and overcoming the inevitable setbacks you'll encounter on your way to mastering the language. Here are some useful strategies you can use to crush your goals. First, switch to strategic goals rather than general internal motivation. People are motivated to learn a second language for any number of reasons, including personal enrichment, better career opportunities, or even meeting new people. However, unlike simpler goals, which may only take a week or two to complete, learning a new language takes time and there will be occasional setbacks and failures. So to reach your overall objective of mastering a new language, you need to learn how to motivate yourself and stay focused on the bigger picture. To do so, it is vital to set specific strategic goals with an action plan. Second, reasons learning goals are vital to success. Learning an entire language well enough to carry on full conversations with native speakers is certainly a goal. But with this as your primary objective, there's a long period of time between the time the goal is set and when it can be realistically attained. The problem is that a failure to achieve an objective creates stress that can build until you either reach the learning goal or quit. The solution is to set more realistic strategic learning objectives that are easier to attain but still keep you on track to learning. Here are some examples of strategic learning objectives that you might set on your way to mastering a new language. Study for 10 minutes every day. Complete one lesson or chapter each week. Learn 20 new words each week. Or even learn one new word each day. The key here is that your learning goals and objectives need to be very concise, attainable, and relevant to your overall objective. As long as you can see progress towards your learning goal, your stress levels will be lower and you're far more likely to succeed. Next, to learn a new language or virtually any new skill, you'll need to make adjustments to your routine. Simply telling yourself that you want to be able to speak fluently probably won't force you to alter your daily or weekly routines. But when your strategic goals include learning a new word each day or a lesson every week, you're forced to alter your schedule to reach the goal or risk certain failure. Although altering your schedule may cause some minor degree of stress at first, the added motivation you get from achieving goals quickly eliminates any initial discomfort. And the more strategic goals you complete each day or week, the faster you can achieve your larger goal of mastering the language. The key to achieving goals includes learning how to deal with the inevitable setbacks and failures. The great part about setting smaller, attainable, strategic learning goals is that you can occasionally miss your objective, but quickly make up for it. So if you can't finish a lesson one week, it's entirely possible to either learn the lesson the following week or even do two lessons to make up for the initial failure. 
The point is that failing to achieve smaller strategic learning goals won't kill your motivation or derail your overall objectives. There are many ways to crush your language learning goals using our program. First, check out our custom learning paths, which are based on your specific goals. Learning paths are designed to help you reach your specific learning objectives by providing you with step-by-step -step strategic goals. So imagine you're about to travel and just wanted to learn enough essential language to navigate any potential emergency situations you might encounter. Our language learning program has created a custom learning path for your goal that includes just 10 lessons or strategic learning objectives. Once you complete the 10 lessons, your larger overall learning goal is complete. Learning paths are one of the most powerful features at our website and help you quickly and efficiently achieve larger learning goals and objectives. For Premium and Premium Plus members, our website offers more than 20 advanced learning tools to make it easier than ever to reach and achieve your goals. These include teacher feedback and comments for every lesson, full lesson transcripts and review tracks, voice recording tools to perfect your pronunciation, lesson review quizzes, and much more. Our language learning program makes it easier and more convenient to achieve your smaller strategic goals so you can quickly reach your larger overall objectives in less time and with less stress. Without setting realistic and attainable learning objectives and goals, your larger dream of mastering a new language might never be realized. Specifically, strategic objectives help to reduce stress, adjust your daily routine, and make it far easier to deal with the inevitable setbacks on your way to mastering a language. We've made it simple and easy for you to set and attain your strategic goals so you can successfully reach the larger goal of mastering your target language. Okay. Today's topic is how to double your speaking time in your target language. Today, you're going to learn one, why it's hard for many learners to make progress with their speaking skills, and two, how you can double your speaking time. If you've always wanted to speak more of your target language, then this episode is for you. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the movies and TV shows cheat sheet. Want to be able to talk about your favorite shows and films? This conversation cheat sheet teaches you 50 plus words and phrases to help you do just that. Second, the ultimate listening video master course. How are your listening skills? Sharpen them up with this video master course. Download it right now. Third, 20 phrases you'll need for the doctor. Learn how to schedule appointments, talk about your symptoms, and much more. This one minute lesson gives you 20 must know phrases. Fourth, want to be able to handle everyday tasks in your target language, like sending and receiving mail? Then this next one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn most of the words and phrases you'll need at the post office. Fifth, learn how to impress native speakers with this one minute lesson. Learn how to give natural compliments, like the food is delicious and this is a beautiful country. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to double your speaking time in your target language. Okay, let's get into part one. Why is real speaking progress so hard to make? Let's say you've studied the language for a few months, and now you finally have a chance to practice speaking. Maybe you have a tutor or a native speaker friend who is willing to practice with you. You start talking and your friend helps you improve bits and pieces of your speaking, like pronunciation and grammar. And maybe you can talk about your day and common topics. But without proper preparation on both sides, the person learning and the person teaching, that's it. You're limited to what you can talk about. You don't know enough of the language to keep going, and they aren't prepared to help you speak more of the language. So if you try to have an open-ended conversation, you'll fall flat at some point. You'll run out of things to say and talk about. You'll run out of words and topics. And this is true outside of language learning. It's easy for conversations to die when you run out of things to talk about. A freestyle approach to conversation is nice for advanced learners or people who do serious preparation but it's not so great for beginners. This is one reason it's hard to make real progress with speaking. You run out of things to say. But there is a way to double your speaking time, even if you're an absolute beginner, even if you're low on words and grammar. And that's by adding structure that you'll find in our lessons. Let's get into that. Part two, 
how you can double your speaking time with our audio and video lessons. Let's say you're having a practice conversation with that same friend, except this time, both of you have a list of topics to follow. Then your conversations won't die out as quickly. The point is, if you have a structure to follow, like a lesson, there's always something for you to fall back on. And if you're already using our audio and video lessons, you get just that. So here's how you can use our lessons to double your speaking time. One, make sure to listen to and review your current audio or video lessons. Why? Each lesson conversation is based on a certain topic, like talking about the weather, talking about family, ordering food, and so on. So by simply taking a lesson, you learn a conversation around a certain topic. Lessons will give you a lot of topics to talk about, along with the relevant grammar and vocabulary, which many beginners might not have. Think about it. If you wanted to talk about a vacation, you'd need to know words like vacation, cruise, and holiday in your target language. You'd also need the right grammar points to help you express ideas. Our audio and video lessons will provide you with all of these, so listen to the lessons and prepare ahead of time. Two, use the dialogue presented in the lesson. In other words, you can memorize the lines from the lesson dialogue. You're already learning conversations in the lesson, so you may as well use them for yourself. And doing this will help prepare you for future conversations. Think about it. We often use lines like, where are you from? What's your name? My name is, how was your weekend? I went out last weekend. Once you memorize these expressions, you can and will use them over and over. As an example, imagine you do a few lessons about the weather. You'll master a few conversations about it. The next time that topic pops up in real life, you'll be able to talk about it. And three, each lesson comes with cultural insights. What does that mean for you? It gives you more things to talk about with a native speaker. So if you bring up a cultural point in a conversation with a native speaker, you'll likely get a good reaction and extend the conversation because you're talking about what they know best, their culture. So today you learn, one, why it's hard for many learners to make progress with their speaking skills. It's because we tend to run out of things to say. And two, how you can double your speaking time. Accomplish this by taking our lessons, memorizing the dialogues, and using the cultural insights. Today, traditional classrooms are no longer the only or even best place to learn a new language. More and more people are finding that they can easily learn a language just about anywhere they have a few minutes of spare time, including their daily commute to work. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average American spends over 50 minutes a day commuting to and from work, or over 300 hours a year. But rather than simply sitting in traffic and wasting the time, you can instead use your daily commute to literally learn a new language in just a few short months. Our language learning program has specialized learning tools that you can use on your commute to and from the office to master a language in your spare time. What are some reasons traditional classroom settings just aren't the best option for most people in today's fast-paced world? Difficulty getting to and from class. Learning on someone else's schedule very expensive and may cost thousands of dollars to complete, can take years to finally complete classes and learn the language. The simple truth is the traditional classroom instruction is simply not a viable option for most people in today's very fast-paced, time-starved world. Now, let's examine how you can learn a language faster, more easily, and at far less expense than traditional classes, all during your commute to work and back home again. Three reasons your daily commute can help you master a language in the next year. On average, Americans spend more than 300 hours per year commuting. During the commute to and from work, over six hours a week is completely wasted. The time isn't used to help you reach any goals or objectives. But thanks to online language learning platforms with audiobooks and other resources that you can access during your commute, you can easily transform wasted time into progress toward learning a new language. With over 300 hours available annually, your daily commute could provide you with enough time to gain significant skills in a new language each and every year. Increase your earning potential while commuting to work. How would you like to transform all those spare commuting hours each week into more money for a new car, house, or even a dream vacation? According to research, someone making $30,000 per year can boost their annual income by $600 or more per year by learning a second language. 
Over the course of a lifetime, that's a significant amount. How? From work-at-home translation jobs to working overseas, there are many ways to leverage your second language into more money in your bank account. So instead of wasting your precious time, you can make your commute more productive and eventually profitable. The more languages you learn, the higher your income potential. Repetition is key to mastering a new language. Not sure if it's practical to learn another language while commuting to and from work each day? Well, not only is it possible, learning in your car on the way to and from work each day can actually help you learn and master any language quickly. The simple truth is that repetition is absolutely vital to truly internalizing and mastering any language. So, if you listen to audiobooks or even audio lessons on your commute to work and then repeat the same lesson on your commute home, the information is more likely to be locked in to your long-term memory. Our language learning program has been helping people learn and master language in the comfort of their home, during their daily commute, or any place they have a few spare minutes of time. Here are five features of our program that make it easy to learn a new language while commuting to and from work. First, the largest collection of audio lessons on the planet by native speaker instructors. Every single week, native speaker instructors create new audio lessons. All lessons are short, to the point, and guaranteed to improve your mastery of a language. Second, the word of the day. Simply exposing yourself to new information and vocabulary terms helps increase your fluency and mastery of your target language. So every single day, check out the word of the day and memorize it during your commute. It's a quick and easy way to boost your vocabulary every day. Third, daily dose mini lessons. Have a short commute to work but still want to make progress towards learning more than just vocabulary? Not a problem. Our daily dose mini lessons are one minute or less and are designed to improve your grammar, conversations, and pronunciation. Fourth, all content is available on a convenient mobile app. You don't need a PC or tablet to learn during your daily commute. Instead, all of our lessons, tools, and resources are available 24-7 via our mobile app. That means you can access all of our audio lessons and other tools during your commute to work or anytime you have a few spare minutes. Fifth, audiobooks and other supplemental resources. In addition to the world's largest online collection of HD audio lessons, our language learning program has audiobooks to enhance your understanding and make it more convenient than ever to learn a language during your commute. The average commute time of most Americans is over 300 hours each year, and it's the perfect opportunity to learn and master a new language. Use the dead time during your daily commute to learn a new language and potentially boost your lifetime earnings. Whatever your motivation, our language learning program has the tools and resources necessary to help you learn a new language each year during your commute to and from work. Immersion is often hailed as the most efficient and effective way to learn a foreign language. In many ways, it's true. With all the language learning methods out there, nothing else comes close to having to think and interact with your environment in the language you're learning. Unfortunately, though, most language learners wrongly assume that the only way to experience language immersion is to pack up and move to a foreign country. But not everyone can afford to spend a summer abroad just to learn a foreign language. Luckily, there are other ways to immerse yourself. These methods are less obvious, but they are effective. In this video, we'll take a look at five steps you can take for the ultimate language immersion experience at home. Number one, transform your digital world into your target language. Technology is an indispensable part of modern life. We interact with phones, computers, tablets, and other electronic devices throughout the day. Why not take these interactions and use them to practice your target language? Most devices give you the option of switching the language of the operating system. Switching your phone or laptop interface to your target language won't make you fluent, but it will help you engage with the language in a very practical way, multiple times every day. Another way to transform your digital life is to check which sites you use on a daily basis and use them in your target language also. A great example of this is switching your version of Google. Using Google in your target language will allow you to search for things in that language and you're more likely to get results in that language as well. So if you're looking for a popular band, a show, or food, something that's usually written in your target language, it will actually be easier to find information about it if you switch your version of Google. Of course, you can also change popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. 
You can even go to news sites for your fill of global news. Do you like podcasts? Try listening to a couple popular podcasts in your target language. Number two, write out a speech or conversation in your target language. A surefire way to increase your ability in a foreign language is to write out a mock conversation or speech in that language. Pretend you have to give a speech on one of your favorite topics. It could be anything from sports, hobbies, or even your favorite movie genre. Now, take some time to write out your fictitious speech. Inevitably, you will hit some roadblocks. But when you get stuck, research the words or grammar points you don't know. This is a highly effective and practical way to increase your vocabulary, and it'll help you practice thinking in a different language. Writing a long, connected train of thoughts exposes the gaps and weaknesses in your language studying. Once you know what these are, you're free to practice them and use them to continue on with your speech. This is also a great way to learn new words in the context of your entire speech. Context is king when you're learning a language. Learning words in the context of other words and sentences helps you surmise what new words mean. It also helps you get comfortable with how these words are practically used. Not to mention, context helps you to remember and recall new information more easily. Number three, practice with native speakers. There are a lot of great learning resources out there for anyone learning a new language. However, nothing quite comes close to practicing the language with a real person. If you live in or around a large metropolitan area, there's a chance that there are some native speakers nearby. Check and see if your area has any local language exchanges or language speaking groups. You're likely to find a native speaker there. If you can't make a connection locally, you can search online. Just as there are language exchanges in the real world, there are also online ones, most of which are free. Number four, connect with other language learners. Native speakers aren't the only people who can aid you on your language learning journey. Practicing with other learners is also helpful. Don't worry if you practice with someone who has a higher or lower level in the language than you. If you're the more advanced learner, you can learn a lot by teaching someone else. As you help someone else understand difficult words or grammatical concepts, you'll find that you start to better understand them yourself. If your learning partner has a higher level, they can be the one to help you overcome the hurdles you encounter as a beginner. After all, what better way to learn than from someone who, as a language learner, has been in your shoes? Number five, reward yourself in your target language. At the end of a busy day, we all love a little relaxation and me time. One of the most enjoyable and effective ways to develop your language skills is to kick back and enjoy the language while doing leisure activities. Whether it's listening to music, watching a movie or TV show, reading a book, or even enjoying a good online video binge, even spending just an extra 30 minutes a day doing something you love in your target language can yield some serious long-term results. If you're a beginner, start with more basic content. You might have to start out listening to simple songs or even watching children's shows. After a while though, you'll be able to dive into the meatier stuff and more engaging stuff as your proficiency increases. Learning a foreign language doesn't mean you have to spend your days straining over grammar rules or textbooks. Any way that you can take your learning off the page and make it more enjoyable will help you learn faster. Immersion is a powerful way to learn a foreign language. And now more than ever, the immersion experience isn't limited to just world travelers. With a little creativity and the right resources, you can experience the language without ever having to leave your hometown. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.